Hello YouTube! It is morning time for me. Um, as you can see on the timestamp. Uh, just doing an update and about these headway cells. Anybody that wants to get these needs to test the capacity. Um, depending on how critical your battery is on their capacities that you need them to be close. I, uh, well, let's just say I went through a hundred and almost 170 cells to try and get one amp hour apart. Got kind of expensive. Um, you'll get some here, and then uh, 73, 77. I even got some that was underrated, but they do guarantee within 80 percent capacity. So, eh. um. And outside these three capacities, I also got 87, and I got some lower 8s, upper 9s, mid 7s, yeah, the capacity was all over the place. So, anybody that wants to get these, bear in mind, depending on your uh, capacity that's needed, um, you're going to have to... Uh, test the cells to get them to match and this as you can see is the top rack of my Ford Escape um, I added active balance and also top balance which is these small board, smaller boards this is a 13 series battery uh, right around 176 volts nominal and the bottom is actually uh, 12S and they get linked together um, I have been taking my time with this and putting a lot of thought in it and I wanted to keep the original format for the escape um, I could have took these and folded them in half put them side by side series them together but uh, I didn't want to do that. There is electronics for the Ford. This one bar here. This circuit board here. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why Ford would want to monitor the center of the cells. Makes no sense to me, but okay, whatever. Um... And then, of course, the circuit board here. I did all the Ford stuff last. But the uh, top balance boards, that that keeps pulls the voltage down if they happen to go over volt. The active balance boards, from what I understand from the manufacturer, yes, they did respond by, where did I get these? Uh, Alibaba? No, no, AliExpress, I believe. I contacted the manufacturer and they said no they will not top balance that's what they said so I had to do uh, top balance in other words battery goes into overvolt bear in mind these batteries are up to one amp hour difference I've got like 74 up to 85 so, and I'll put the higher capacity cells in the center. Um, reason being, <clears throat> center has the highest resistance, and the center is also the, the spot that, uh, haven't proven it. But, my thought on it is, the center cells is the ones that's going to charge the last, and the end cells will charge and discharge first. I don't want them going over, over bolt, which is why I put the top balance in there to pull it down. And any cells that uh, drop down, the active balance will pull the voltage from the center cells to go to the outer cells whenever the car is in park. Or even, even while I'm driving, it'll still do that. This is finished. 
All I've got to do is add a positive post. The battery is actually, I had to build it to be upside down. So this whole rack gets turned upside down. Now, that's the finished thing. That's the finished one. This is the start. Now, as you can see, I've got them all tied together. I've already started the top balance part with the individual circuit boards. Folks, this is a pain in the butt. Literally. I've got a double solder for the active balance and cut all the wires for each and every cell. Um, <clears throat> and I needed a way to separate the batteries for air gap. So... 3D printed. I'll pull one of these out of here. A 3D printed these. It's actually the holders with the ends cut off. And in order to let them slide, I had to grind the ends so that I can uh, slide off. Pulled up. It's got a little snap to it. A little catch. Which is what I wanted. Because I don't want them. If I ever have to service the battery. I don't want them. Uh, coming out. For the, from the bottom. A lot of thought has gone into it. Especially with the fact of the top. Top rack has to be flipped upside down. Um, that rack, when it's turned right on my bench, everything's over here. And then when I turn it upside down, it'll still be over here. And the other stuff will be over here. And the fans actually sit right across here. So it'll blow air in here. Now, folks, these batteries are heavy. And there is a space on the bottom. So uh, when I set the rack in, it's actually going to put weight here. Um, in order to alleviate that stress, I'm just going to use this foam padding that uh, battery hookup sent me. Um, and it's... It's not that rigid, which is fine. It'll give it some kind of support in the center. There's not going to be a lot of weight in the center. Um, but there is the weight of the cells in the middle. Now, this this top rack, hey, it, it is not right. Um, I've got this foam, courtesy of battery hookup came in with the uh, headway cells um, so I am going to put this to use in the center just like this so that and that is as far as the thickness goes it's perfect um, they may have a little bit of sag to them and then the foam on the bottom side of the cells underneath. This is the part that goes in the casing um, on the bottom. The less dense stuff that's thinner will support the cells and then this will support the top rack from uh, sagging down. Uh, these, they're a little rocky. I'm going to have to do something with that. I had an idea to uh, alleviate the back and forth movement, but it was going to cause a problem with wiring the, uh, the entire battery. Now, let me show you. Now, as you can see, let me put that camera lid. all the wires and it's like that I tried to move them off to the side because I knew I, I wanted that battery to be spaced out so 
uh, certain points I've got I made a point to move the wires now what I was uh, thinking is take one of these with one of these slide it together and make a T and it actually worked it made them so that uh, they wouldn't spin but the problem was in the wiring because there there is a small gap here but uh, it it would pinch it would pinch the wires so that that's bad definitely bad I don't want to disable the uh, first level of safety for these batteries <laughs> and the active balance from uh, Dolly is active well I mean not but um, it's Bluetooth yeah that's what I meant to say it, they are totally Bluetooth um, I can link to my phone and uh, see what's going on with each cell and when I tested these I thought for sure that I charged each and every cell after I capacity tested them. But on that first rack over there, right there, I found six cells that was never charged after they were tested. I was like, whoa, okay, well, my bad. And, and actually, it's a good thing I did have Bluetooth to be able to see that. I had to top the cells off. They was, they was totally discharged. And if I had to put that rack in there, um, I may end up having a problem with it because, well, about six of the cells was dead. Um, as I showed before, this is the original cell that's in the uh, 2008 Ford Escape Hybrid. Factory wanted 40 bucks a piece for these batteries. I told them no. I'm not paying 40 bucks a piece for old tech. Not doing it. There's 50 of these cells in that. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Um, so I ended up, instead of spending, what was it, 40 bucks a piece times 50 cells, two grand. And would have had to replace all the cells myself on under a grand with what I paid. And thumbs up for battery uh, for battery hookup. He did try and assist me. I told him what I was doing and the trouble I was having. He pretty much donated like 60 cells. Um, because I was having such a problem trying to find capacities that actually matched I wanted to stay within 500 milliamp hour on these batteries uh, but uh, yeah just some of them I got it some of them I don't um, <laughs> but uh, I ended up overall per pack right around one amp hour difference um, I just I could not buy any more batteries I just couldn't and the the problem with these they're overheating you should be able to get about 7 volts to 7.5 volts but anywhere around the 7 volt range they start overheating so the car was heating up the batteries uh, during during the charge phase and I would actually randomly get a wrench light on the dash um, over on the left hand bottom corner and now I see why out of six cells four of them overheated uh, while I was trying to get them at full charge which was only using 7.4 volts that that should be a respectable range for charging nickel metal hydride but that yeah I had some get up to 150 degrees yeah it was uh, it was nuts but uh, yep yeah, just in case any of you are wondering what's going on with this, I am making progress, but I am taking my sweet time. Um, I'm in no hurry. That car spent three and a half years, broke down after I bought it. I was able to use it for about six months and then had to park it for three and a half years because the front brakes just 
and they just went out uh, season up turned out I had a mechanic I paid a mechanic to come over because I didn't know anything about it. I mean it was a hybrid it was my first hybrid I ever owned and I thought it was something that was going to be really expensive, like five grand to fix. But instead, it was both calipers defective. Both of them. Both brake lines were defective. Um, so I, I bought all the hardware, changed it out myself, and it's been fine since on the front brakes. Uh, so now, as I was saying in the last video I did on my skate, how long do the batteries last? Don't know about every single car, but the one that I have, 2008 to 2023. That's how long they'll last. And actually, I could have kept going with it, but uh, due to my job running me around everywhere, I could be 110 miles from home. I just did not want a chance being stuck that far away from home. And the car not want to run because the batteries just totally failed. And it, the car shuts down because the batteries are overheating for safety. And they were definitely overheating. Uh, some of the plastic casing, they got so hot, some of the plastic casing actually uh, lightly melted. When I went to take, take the original bolts out of the end, they didn't do nothing but turn. Well, they're supposed to be bonded to the plastic. Not the case. They literally just wallowed out. But anyway, YouTube, that's what's going on with this. The Saturn's on hold until I get this escape done. Um, but once I get it done, I'll be starting on that. And I do have everything I need for... Um, the Saturn, except for a crankshaft, I'm going to have to cut the end off of it where the flywheel mounts. So I'm definitely going to have to buy that. Cut the flywheel side of the crankshaft off and then run it to the machine shop and let them machine it so it will go onto the electric motor. Until next time, YouTube, have a great day, and I'll catch you later.